Here I compare two 90 millimeter telescopes. One is a Celestron C90 Maxitov and the other one Skywatcher Evo Star 90. Let's see. Tonight is very clear. Jupiter here and the moon are visible. So I'm testing two telescopes tonight. Uh, this is the Skywatcher Evo Star 90 and uh, this is Celestron C90 and uh, of course I will do uh, C2 with straight through Japanese style so I remove this diagonal the image quality in both of them are good for the for what they are in C90 we have an image which is chromatic aberration free I can see the cloud tops cloud belts of the Jupiter two main ones easy sometimes a third one and with this one at the moment I just see two cloud belts although the magnification is slightly higher that's five millimeters that be but the image size is almost similar which one I prefer? I prefer this one. C90 has a sharper image. Although both of them have a 90 millimeter aperture, this is a clear aperture of 90 millimeter. But this one, 90 millimeter, beside the central obstruction, the secondary mirror. So it's a little bit smaller than 90, but yet it's sharp. The image is very sharp. Which one is easier to observe? This one is easier. It's very sturdy. When I get close to it, if I accidentally touch anything, no vibration. This is a long tube, it's an evil star. And by accident, if I touch anything, there is a long vibration. And that causes the image to vibrate and move. I'm sitting inside my pop up observatory uh, tent to avoid the light pollution. And the target I'm watching is the planet Jupiter, as you can see. So let me just use 10 millimeter aspheric in both of them and then compare the images with the same eyepieces. Okay, now I'm using the 10 millimeter Svivoni aspheric in both of them uh, and the Sky Watch uh, and the Celestron C90, the magnification is very high. The image size is almost three times uh, the the one in the Evo Star with the same eyepiece. Uh, and with the same proportion, that means it's just magnifying the image without actually seeing more details. Getting a little bit fuzzy. Uh, is it pleasant? No. Um, so probably I have to use a lower magnification with this something like 20 or 15 millimeter with this one uh, image quality is really good um, I uh, I can see the details that I have to see two main belts of the Jupiter tonight I cannot see any other details it seems uh, at the moment I have let this cool down of course for one hour then I've came after it so the image uh, in this one is uh, three times one-third the size of the, the image of the Jupiter one-third of the size in this one so which one I prefer I prefer the image in the Evo star with this uh, magnification let me just reduce the magnification in this uh, go for something a little bit higher uh, in the focal length that means lowest magnification okay and the Celestron C90 now I'm using the uh, SV Boni 23 millimeter. The image size now in this and this almost are similar. Uh, this is 10 millimeter. This is 23 millimeter. If it's the same SV Boni aspheric. Now I can see uh, that this image is aberration free. No chromatic aberration. This one is slight chromatic aberration. This is pure. The amount of the details I see in both of them are similar. Probably a slightly sharper in this one. Not much. Uh, which one I prefer? Uh, I prefer this one. The image is this one. With this magnification, is better. Okay, now I'm looking with the SV Boni 10 millimeter 
and the Evo Star 90 and the 16 millimeter Nirvana uh, 82 degrees IPS on the C90. So image quality in this one, uh, the image size is in this and this almost similar. Uh, this shows more detail than the 16 millimeter, which I prefer. This one, I have see better resolution in this one. Although this image is more color free, slight chromatic aberration here, like slight, not much. But the amount of the details I can see in this, and the focus doesn't really snap into, you know, it doesn't snap into focus. It is, it is a little bit of a range. This one sharp in the focus. So the refractor is, in my viewpoint, in this test that I'm doing both 90 millimeter aperture this one is better than this one and I prefer the refractor Evo 90 Evo Star 90 okay when I move the Jupiter to the center of the field of view of this eyepiece is almost of a chromatic aberration free it's color free uh, image as color free as this one yet I prefer this one this gives me better image resolution I see more detail slight more details this one has a pure beautiful image but resolution I, I think in this one is better although this is a good good uh, telescope I've tested you know many subjects many occasions on the moon and uh, you know things like the Orion Nebula and Trapezium. Okay I'm now using the Nirvana 7mm on this uh, C90. Image gets just magnified, uh, you don't see more details. It's chromatic aberration free but uh, not good pleasant view. Let me just put this 7mm on this one and see how it is. Okay, immediately I put a 7mm Nirvana 82 degree eyepiece on the Evo Star 90. The image quality is beautiful and uh, it's almost chromatic aberration free and uh, at near the center, very good. Uh, what I can say is that the image is crisp and sharp. I can even see the curvature in the um, cloud tops of the cloud belts of the Jupiter. So that almost looks like 3D image is beautiful it's just just beautiful it's pure beautiful I think refractors in that sense are better than the Maxitov no matter what to do with the Newtonian or this one central obstruction uh, is a barrier to, to your viewing uh, although it's chromatic aberration free it's pleasant but the details I can see in this is, is, is superb the image is smaller because this has a f10 I think this one must be around f20 or something like that I will check it later I will tell you but uh, no I prefer this one it will start scholarship it will start 90 okay I have now started to see uh, other than the two cloud main cloud beds I can see more cloud belts on the top of the image which is in the real world this is the lower part of it in this one uh, barely I can see it I notice it first in this then I look through here it's very clear in this one although the image quality I mean the aberration free chromatic aberration is non-existent in this one uh, image is a bit paler the cloud belts are a bit paler this one cloud belts are or more you know brownish color brownish kind of like reddish brown and uh, more pronounced colors you can see this one looks a slightly paler as if washed a little bit but it's crisp and sharp however the details I can see with this one is superior to this one all that is getting cooler is getting better as it time as the time goes by And another thing that I just want to point to is that in this image, in this uh, eyepiece, Nirvana 7mm, the disc of the planet is kind of yellowish. But this one is kind of white, creamy color, paler. 
and with the same proportion the back cloud dots are also paler uh, it's all, all the way to beautiful I must say it's beautiful the image is nice chromatic vibration and here it's a little bit yellower and probably because there may be lantanium glass in this one in this eyepiece and uh, yeah I think that uh, I prefer this one because I can see more details but the image quality in this one I can live with this also it's nice although I don't see the more than two cloud pills at the moment occasionally in very good seeing moments I can see another one ok I'm now using 30mm plus hole and the uh, Bresser oh Sieben Sieben uh, Two millimeter, two times Barlow. That practically means this is fifteen millimeter, and this is seven millimeter IPS Nirvana. So in this one, now image quality is better than this one. <laughs> big eye relief, by the way. <laughs> really big eye relief. <laughs> this is an unbranded Chinese uh, plus IPS, and uh, yeah, it's really impressive. Now, which telescope I prefer? I prefer this one. <laughs> now this image is getting getting really better. I'm surprised by the Barlow. The image is chromatic aberration free. I can see more than one, two cloud belts. With this one, you can notice now that it's yellow. It's not as pure as this one. So <laughs> with this one, I'm surprised. It's getting better now. Wow, we can see a lot of details now with this. Let me just quickly change this Barlow uh, plus all. Um, combination to here and bring the 7 millimeter. The image size is almost the same. Okay, I have now 7 millimeter here. The image is not very good. I don't like it. With this one, uh, Puzzle and uh, two times Barlow, Zeeban Barlow. Image quality perfect, beautiful. So I can say that the performance of this telescope depends on the uh, eyepiece, not just the optics of the telescope. So this optic compilation, this unbranded Chinese puzzle, 13 millimeter, 30 millimeter, and two times broader makes it 15 millimeter. Really good, crisp, sharp. And both of them it shows a really good image. So, um, yeah, but that means that I'm not using the best eyepiece. Okay, I use the Nirvana, I use the Nagler, I'm using now the 7.5 millimeter Takahashi. This is 7 millimeter Nagler. I can say that 7mm or 7.5mm is too much magnification for on this telescope. It doesn't give you any more details, it just actually deteriorates slightly the image quality. So, 50mm combination in this uh, Barlow and uh, eyepiece, uh, 30mm uh, eyepiece, was really superb. Really superb. Uh, seven millimeters is too much for this max You cannot uh, get any better image. This telescope is capable of doing um, probably uh, above 10 millimeter it was really good. Okay, I've now changed to 18 millimeter Takashi LE on this max setup and uh, compared with this 15 millimeter combination 13 multiplied by divided by 2 15 millimeter Chinese unbranded puzzle. Image quality is superb in this. Oh God, I've not seen anything better than this. And in this, it's uh, 18 millimeter. No, no, it's not good. Let me just switch between them. Okay, I've now switched immediately between this uh, 15 millimeter combination, Chinese unbranded puzzle, 30 millimeter divided by two times Barlow, just as even Barlow, no more. Uh, image quality is not bad, but that's not as good as this 18 millimeter on this one. So in general, what I can conclude from all of these observations? Refractor is better than the Maxitoff. That's my conclusion. A Chinese unbranded plus hole is really super. <laughs> what you want more? Borrow it, you have anything that you want. Cheapest is, is, is not always the worst. In this case, it's actually better. Oh, oh, and when you buy this, of course, it's around 200 pounds. You get a mount, you get a tripod, you get a um, finder scope, you get two eyepieces, 
and uh, yeah, that's everything. And you get also, I mean, these are these are for sky tea. With this one, you get a finder scope and a tube and a bag and a box. That's it. And uh, probably one eyepiece or and also yeah, one uh, one star diagonal. Probably one eyepiece also. I'm not sure about that, but anyway. So, which one I prefer? I was going to buy it. This is compact, easy to carry, really good. It is bigger. But if I want after better image quality, I will go with this refractor. End of story. Okay, this is the comparison of the size of these two telescopes. This is really nice size, just tiny, like a bottle of, you know, water or flask. That refractor is huge. Despite this compact size, the focal length of this is actually bigger. It's 1,250 or 1 meter and 25 centimeter. Longer than that in total because the light goes once, bounces back, then comes again, then this distance also has to go to get focused. So practically it becomes longer than this. And all of this is the magic of the Maxitov telescope. That is such a compact package. If I want to use such a thing, a, a refractor or a Maxitov, it depends for me on the usage that I want. This long one is not compact. It's not easy, probably. This one is compact and easy. You can take it anywhere with you. It comes actually in a room. In a, Rucksack. So that is something you can take with you in in a trip, uh, in an airplane, in a journey. Easy to take it and easy to set up. And refractor, that big one, although it is good also, is not that easy. So you make your choice.